I have been acquainted with racism my entire life. Growing up in a small, primarily white, Midwest town, it has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. Whether it's being called a nigger in the hallways or having my hair pet like I'm a dog, I have experienced my fair share, as has the vast majority of the black community. While I have been familiar with racism for my entire life, something I have only recently become acquainted with is fear. Specifically fear that I will be killed because of the color of my skin by the people who have sworn an oath to protect me. Unfortunately, black children today are not allowed the few years of blissful ignorance afforded to me that I now cherish. Now, black children must learn about the rampant murder of their community at the hands of the police as soon as they can speak, because the alternative to ignorance is death. The alternative is these children lacking the knowledge to even have a chance of staying alive when dealing with a police force that automatically sees you as a threat, no matter how young or blissfully ignorant you may be. So I ask you, how long until our children are no longer born with a target on their backs? It seems like every day we have to wake up and decide if we are going to endure the pain of watching the unjust murder of another black man or if we stay ignorant. As I said before, ignorance is death. Ignorance is complacency. Ignorance in this case is turning your back on your brothers and sisters because it's uncomfortable for you to look. Well, if you're uncomfortable, at least you're not dead. So we must always endure the pain we must always endure uncomfortability. We must always endure the fear until there is no more reason to be afraid. How long until our community can live without fear? Alongside fear is a near equal amount of anger. Anger caused by the fact that oftentimes not even multiple videos from multiple angles and multiple witnesses is enough evidence to charge and convict a cop of murder. We are not even allowed the satisfaction of seeing these vicious murderers brought to justice. Instead, if we are lucky enough to see them charged, we get to watch as they are defended unashamedly by their fellow officers, have excuses made for them by politicians, the media, and the general public. Then we watch as they are acquitted and allowed to continue their violent tendencies within the same department, or at worst, in a precinct just a town or two away. How long until a cop seen murdering someone on camera is enough to guarantee that charges are brought and a long sentence is passed down? This is not an issue of a few bad officers. The issue is with the system the police force is based on. It was built from its very inception to harass, intimidate, and do harm to the black community. Even if all of these good cops champion for reform, abuses of power and murder at the hands of the police would continue. A building must be torn down before any changes can be made to its foundation. We are not waiting any longer for justice. We will no longer twiddle our thumbs and hope things change with the next election. The rights of black Americans should not come and go with the tide of politics. It is essential that we move forward and never allow ourselves to be pushed back. This requires us to speak loud and bring attention to black issues long after these protests are over. So I will continue to speak loud, speak proud, and stand up for the rights of my community for as long as I can. Because after all, how long until it's me?